what is the typical pictorial showing you it is the orange tonsils orange tonsils are the features of which type of hyperlipidemia doctor it is typically seen in tangier's disease so what is tangier tangier is the deficiency of abca1 what is abca1 it is a transporter that facilitates the efflux of uh, unesterified cholesterol and phospholipids from the cell is what you have to basically remember is the voice clear and abca1 in the liver and intestine it will rapidly lipidate the apo apo a1 so any deficiency of apo of abca1 in turn will affect the lipid profile which is called tangier's disease in this people the hdl levels hdl is called the scavenger of cholesterol so hdl levels will be typically low is what you need to remember now which is a b cell immunodeficiency out of all this so there is one topic of anantanarayanan every time they ask the questions two pages you have to read in anantanarayanan what are t cell deficiencies b cell deficiencies combined deficiencies what is job syndrome what is chediac higashi what is uh, the ataxia telangiectasia and um, the chronic granulomatous disease all these five six conditions iga isolated iga deficiency so there are five to six conditions which you have to thoroughly read they are called immunodeficiency disorders in anantanarayanan okay so that is a homework now regarding the thymus how does thymus basically function the b thymocytes whose t cell receptor bind with the high affinity to self antigen complexes they are clonally deleted at the time of uh, the embryonic life the job of the thymus is to destroy the cells which have auto antigenicity property so that all our autoimmune disorders why our own immune system doesn't attack us because of the immunological memory generated in clonal selection a process done by the thymus thymus is like upsc union public service commission which will conduct the selection process so it will tell what is hamara kya hai paraye kya hai huh? so what is self and what is foreign it will make us to recognize now how does ciprofloxacin act ciprofloxacin is a dna gyrase inhibitor the reason it interfere with the replication of the dna is what you need to basically remember a 38 year old who is re receiving anti hypertensive medication developed the features which are shown to you what are what are, what are the features it is anaphylaxis so typically anaphylaxis is the feature of the ace inhibitors like uh, ramipril is what you need to remember 64 year old has osteoporosis and receiving raloxifen how does raloxifen act raloxifen like drugs are called serums selective estrogen receptor modulator if you take uh, estrogen what will estrogen will do in endometrium it lead to hyperplasia in the bone it will prevent osteoporosis in the breast it will promote breast cancer if you give purely estrogen to a person to treat osteoporosis what will it do it will take care of osteoporosis same time it will predispose to endometrial cancer and breast cancer so we want such a drug which antagonize the estrogen in breast and uh, endometrium and uh, agonize the action of the estrogen in bone such a thing is called selective estrogen receptor modulator right so that is the function of raloxifen there is a study and you are asked what is the likelihood ratio of a negative test if you don't know the formula clean bold 
you break head also you cannot do anything in the exam hall i know that this kind of questions we will ask to make you cry in exam hall right so 1 minus sensitivity by specificity will give you the likelihood ratio of the negative test is what you need to basically remember now you have done the 2d curve and uh, what are you finding here there is a left ventricle right ventricle left atrium right atrium and uh, typically atrioventricular cushion defect is there av cushion defect is there okay so please bring your smartphones there is a link if you enter that link in that all the color images of the things given in your paper based exam are available if you want clarity right typically av cushion defects are very common in down syndrome that's a point uh, uh, to be taken in this particular question now what is the best imaging way to identify the renal scarring uh, because of the uti that happened from the childhood we do the renal dmsa scintigraphy and uh, which is the way by which radioactive isotope is being given and we will check how well the renal parenchyma is able to take it up if there is a scarring in the renal parenchyma the uptake of the radionuclide diminishes that is what you will identify in the camera right? so that is what uh, you basically will do now the next question 67 year old has severe dyspnea was admitted with COPD and typically she is presenting with uh, hypercarbia, hypoxia, acidosis which is all a state of respiratory acidosis so this is a classical case of COPD exacerbation so how do you manage COPD exacerbation every time you can't put endotracheal tube connect to ventilator ultimately patient will die due to ventilator pneumonia not due to COPD so there is a non-invasive way by which you can be able to provide a positive end expiratory pressure and keep the keep the bronchi patent without collapsing when the air is coming out so that the air won't get uh, imprisoned inside the alveoli right so what is COPD fundamentally it is a air trapping disorder obstructive pulmonary disease means what air trapping disorder why in case of emphysema bronchitis and asthma there is a air trapping in the lung and all the air does not expire out what is the reason for that typically you have an alveoli you have a bronchi at the time of expiration when the air is passing out from the alveoli into the bronchi the pressure outside will try to collapse and the pressure inside will try to maintain patency until the air comes out what happens in emphysema there is a loss of elasticity of this balloon called alveolus if the elasticity of the alveolus diminishes then the amount of the intrabronchial pressure positive pressure is all because of the elasticity of the surrounding alveolus so that will decrease because of that even before the air reaches half the way the bronchi will collapse and that lead to the trapping of the air inside the alveoli and that lead to a hyper inflated lungs is what you have to basically understand so how can you manage this uh, uh, situation you will give CPAP continuous positive airway pressure or a BiPAP which is bi-level positive airway pressure and try to maintain the positive pressure inside the bronchi and prevent them from undergoing a collapse whenever the air is coming out at the time of expiration so that is the logic behind giving CPAP and BiPAP having said that you take an opportunity to walk into your intensive care unit and ask your anesthetist show me how the BiPAP is being put how many of you have seen a CPAP you have seen a 
So the principle behind CPAP, why do we put CPAP in the management of uh, the asthma or uh, um, a severe case of uh, COPD, you must be very sure. Okay, doctor. Now, uh, uh, the next question is, 8 month old has refractory eczema and typically he has 6 episodes of otitis media. Severe nose bleeds, thrombocytopenia, after giving so many clues, if still Vishkotaldrit syndrome doesn't sound in your ears, you are not for this century to get into PG. So, please do read some of the very common questions. 200% you should be ready to attack them and kill them in the exam hall. You must go like a hunter with that sabotaging aggressiveness. Chalo, puch ne do, jo bhi puch hai, mai dekh lunga. Wo attitude mein jana. Arre, ye bhi puch liya kya, mai mar gaya. If you go in that attitude, no, ouch. All wars are won even before you go to battle. Do you know that? All wars are in mind. Are in mind. If you lose the craftsmanship to fight at the mind level, you can't even go to war. Forget about winning. Right? So that's the reason, doctor. Be strong in the concepts. Clear the areas where you have never read in MBBS till past MBBS. Right? Identify what are the focused list of 5-600 topics that you need to master and then go to exam. No one will stop you to win. Let me tell you. It is a fight with of you against you, not with others. Please remember. There is nothing like a competition, everybody is reading nowadays. Oh, will I get seat or not? Bullshit, that is all. It is a fight between you and your mind. Your ability to get on to the top of the horse called your own mind. To sit and uh, master the topics which are frequently tested. Generally what we do is we start with all seriousity. Everybody will have aspiration and dream to become a MD. But unfortunately what happens is after a little preparation they give up, they don't read, they take breaks, they find excuses. Sir, chod dena. What? may come, you must be sure to have the concepts very clear. Most high yielding topics, focused preparation, not more than 2-300 hours I am leading you to read. If you are reading more than 300 hours for entrance means, you are reading nonsense. Teen so gante kafi hai. And it is the experience last 15 years. The abyssals are a topper in entrance and many students have topped in the entrance. What we recognized is there is not a hell lot of load to read actually per entrance. They are very focused things to read, precise to read and application of the what you have read. That is most important. So, it is an excellent condition. Please remember, with recurrent infections, thrombocytopenia, eczema, that defines the Vishkotavich. While bathing her three-year-old child the mom found a mass in the abdomen. You are thinking of Wilms humor. It is often associated with what? Hemihypertrophy. Can be an associated physical finding. Diabetic retinopathy. Why do you see cotton wool spots? Why are they cotton wool in appearance? Their cotton wool spots are the infarcts that are typically seen in the narrow fiber layer is what you need to recognize. So, I hope the online students are able to have a clear, loud audio transmission. Can you please punch whether the voice and video are clear for you? I could see about 9 plus viewers today evening. So, doctor, 18 year old has a problem in moving, problem in memory and he has been having frequent falls. And a stooping posture, festinant gait, what is that called? Parkinson plus syndrome. Typically, Aljamer is one such scenario. Very happy to see Priya, Harsh and many more online. So, stooping posture, festinant gait, they are all Parkinson plus syndromes. And typically, Aljamer 
is one of the Parkinson plus scenarios where it starts like Parkinson like features and over a period of time dementia adds on is what you have to basically remember. Now doctor, a 74 year old with chronic renal failure is admitted with infective endocarditis and you have to initiate gentamicin and her creatinine clearance is around 29 ml per minute. So you should know two practical equations. If you have uh, ordered for gentamicin at least one patient during your internship, you had a Uljan agar dil dimak mein hai to ya answer karte. Agar kabhi bhi patient ko gentamicin diya nahi to, agar diye to bhi uska creatinine dekhne ke bina hi diye to, isko answer karna baut mushkil ho. Right? So, doctor, the rule is simple. Most of the times the recommended dose is 7 mg per kg IV. Every 24 hours. And uh, you have to monitor for 3 days or more with a level taken 6 to 14 hours followed by 3rd dose. After 3rd dose is being given, 14, uh, uh, 6 to 14 hours ke baad, you have to check the dosage. I mean serum concentration. But based on the creatinine clearance, once more, the dosage is decided. So 40 to 60 ml per minute if the creatinine clearance, then 1.2. 20 to 40 is 1.2 to 1.5. Less than 20 is 2 mg per kg loading dose. So accordingly, so in this case, she has a clearance of 29 and uh, 7 mg per kg is inappropriate. So, she should receive 1.2 to 1.5 mg per kg every 12 to 24 hours. So, 1.5 mg per kg OD is the most correct answer over here. Now, 59 year old has got acute severe lumbar pain and typically in neurological examination there is a weakness and loss of sensation to touch in L4, L5 and S1. Vibration, joint, everything is preserved but the ankle reflex is absent which is S1, innervation and the plantar response is equivocal. So what is the best thing that you want to do in this given case? Obviously, in this given case, we are suspecting a Corda Equina syndrome. So Corda Equina versus Conus medullaris. Please go back to anatomy2medicine.com video library. In that the neurology and in that the Corda Equina syndrome try to review. So. The patient has a lot of features of Corda Equina syndrome and uh, whenever there is a herniation of the lumbar disc, typically L4, L5 or L5, S1 uh, or if there is any tumor or if there is an epidural abscess in that area. So what is responsible? You can only do if you do the MRI spine which is the best imaging modality is what you need to basically remember. 35 year old. Normal urea electrolytes, liver function tests and uh, the fasting, uh, I mean the blood count. Overnight fasting if you do, sugars are dropping down to 50. So what is the best test you want to do in this given case? Spontaneous hypoglycemia is the classical presenting feature of insulinoma. So to prove insulinoma, you have to do a 72 hour fast and then examine the insulin C peptide level and glucose level that is considered to be the initial investigation of choice. 67 year old BP is 145 by 80, pulse is 85, pitting edema is there and uh, she has got a proteinuria and long history of rheumatoid arthritis. So what is the summary of the case? Typically, rheumatoid arthritis, proteinuria, hypoalbuminemia in a chronic inflammatory state like rheumatoid arthritis is suggestive of systemic amyloidosis. Amyloidosis, whenever it is systemic amyloidosis, rectal biopsy is considered to be the investigation of choice is what you need to basically understand. So from tomorrow onwards regularly every day evening 5 to 8 AIMS question bank discussion continues.
so uh, the request of our online students to come 5:30 onwards 5:30 to 8 we'll have a aims discussion harsh is saying sir for neat exam also same high yielding topic discussion same neat is also done by dnb dnb done by dnb already we developed 220 hours of video review on all the 19 subjects of past 15 years dnb question bank and made available in uh, anatomy to medicine.com so take a chance to review the dnb question bank and uh, from august first week onwards we will start day long session with uh, neat pg question bank one day anatomy one day physiology like that last 15 years all india question bank is there that also we will discuss and every day evening 5 to 8 uh, we continue to have uh, the aims question bank discussion topic wise and even on sundays so that is the plan we will give you the schedule shortly prednisolone to hydrocortisone what is the conversion favorite question of examiner prednisolone hydrocortisone dexamethasone methyl prednisolone potency comparison table jo hai na oh to tips mein rehna agar indian rupee is 1 rupee how many is the us dollars and uk pounds and dubai dinars kya hota hai dubai mein dinar hota hai ya dollar hota hai dinar riyal riyal hai riyad riyals ha so of all the begging type of currency is ours lowest if you go to sri lanka even lower than us there 2 rupees of sri lanka is equal to 1 rupee of india right i think for us to compare only countries like afghanistan they are left over right at least we can feel oh we are little better than them pakistan rupee is more uh, uh, costlier or uh, indian huh ours is more uh, powerful than the pakistan currency right so similarly hydrocortisone dexamethasone hydrocortisone is sabse mildest in strength it is a unit of steroid if one unit you call steroid is hydrocortisone then everything falls in comparison with that so 1 mg is equal to 4 mg hydrocortisone 1 mg prednisolone so that is the reason this patient should be given uh, uh, how much she is taking 20 mg plus 10 mg 30 mg 30 by 4 is equal to 7.5 so 7.5 mg is what need to be remembered so a patient is having aortic stenosis and you want to establish that his diagnosis is this what is this image bicuspid aortic valve so aortic stenosis can be of three levels three level ka hota hai aortic stenosis one level is subaortic stenosis where do you find subaortic level of stenosis typically from the left atrium left ventricle aortic valve arises you have a interventricular septum and you have a mitral valve uh, here mitral valve leaflet dangling so sometimes what happens is whenever interventricular septum is hypertrophy the anterior mitral valve leaflet and uh, interventricular septum will touch each other so that the blood which came from left atrium into left ventricle cannot go into aorta because of the touching of this anterior mitral valve leaflet with interventricular septum what is this called as hocm hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy which is a subvalvular obstruction second time second type kya hota hai in conditions like williams syndrome there is a supravalvular narrowing of the aorta supravalvular stenosis can happen 
or if there is any aortic coaptation that also is a obstruction above the level of aortic valve then bicuspid aortic valve like conditions lead to obstruction at the level of valvular level now how to differentiate valvular from supravalvular from a subvalvular obstruction is the question here suppose if it is a valvular obstruction what will happen the blood is there in the ventricle ventricle is undergoing systole to push the blood into aorta and while doing that if there is any stenosis it will contract very strongly and the pressure is increased so much underneath what underneath the closed valve so the closed valve typically will undergo a ballooning because of the pressure below it it will balloon it up and then it will open it so when a ballooned valve opens it will make a popping musical sound the ballooning will lead to a popping musical sound which is called ejection systolic click ejection systolic click so what is the uh mechanism underneath the auscultatory finding called systolic click high pressure in the ventricle will push the aortic valve to undergo ballooning in valvular stenosis leading to that musical sound called click so click can only be heard if there is a stenosis at valvular level not at the subvalvular or supravalvular level so ejection systolic click is a auscultatory hallmark which is unique for only a valvular level aortic stenosis is what you have to basically remember systolic ejection click then doctor 33 year old with chronic hepatitis c typically has got the various findings which have been shown to you and also he has got a lesion which is a vasculitic necrosis of the skin and levator reticularis is what you could see here so what scenario hepatitis c positive individual develops levator reticularis if he develops mixed cryoglobulinemia a form of vasculitis so that is the reason the answer is mixed essential cryoglobulinemia is what you have to basically understand so in which condition elevated total cortisol level occur whenever we have stress or whenever there is pregnancy a 76 year old with comes to rheumatology clinic his alkaline phosphatase is eight times elevated 830 and he also has got what type of palsy facial palsy so somebody who has got and also his calcium is normal generally high alkaline phosphatase is accompanied by hypercalcemia but here a normal calcemic state with a high alkaline phosphatase with a clean nerve paralysis is equal to pages typically in pages there is a thickness of the calvarial bones because of that there is a stenosis of uh, the cranial foramina and that lead to compression of the cranial nerves coming out and that lead to development of facial paralysis is what you need to basically understand now you are asked to review a 76 year old and uh, the sodium is 127 and uh, x ray is showing pneumonia a pneumonic patient developing hyponatremia immediately must uh, ring the bells of which condition sadh any neurosurgical trauma neurosurgical procedure or a head trauma or pneumonia or a ectopic malignancy in the lung anything can lead to sadh whenever inappropriate adh secretion is there what will happen all the antidiuretic hormone will prevent the free water clearance into the urine and free water clearance is typically reduced is what you need to basically remember now uh, the clinical feature shown in the figure 
classically it looks reminds you of which which fruit strawberry so strawberry gingiva is a typical feature which you see in case of vaginus granulometosis one of the oral manifestations of vagina then uh, strawberry tongue typically with bulbar conjunctival injection without exudate means it reminds you of kawasaki disease then uh, uh, 81 year old has a difficulty and found to have depressed then uh, what is a true statement about him one of the important contraindications for electroconvulsive therapy is recent cerebrovascular accident if it is there you have to avoid uh, ect but is pregnancy contraindication to ect no pregnancy is not a contraindication 28 year old excessive sleepiness during the day and uh, typically he has got uh, sleep paralysis excessive daytime somnolence and cataplexy what is this this is called triad of features of narcolepsy is what you have to basically remember 17 year old is being brought what is an important finding suggestive of schizophrenia of all the features is a very important question so very happy to see 13 plus online viewers on the sunday uh supposed to be spent uh, with a nice post dinner post lunch magnesho movie huh? so we are losing the simple pleasures of life uh, in the race for uh, getting so incongruity of affect affect hota hai mood incongruous affect what is the meaning of incongruity of the affect suppose if your friend came and told that hey i didn't qualify in uh, pg entrance exam you say ha 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 babushar entrance mein jeetna tere haath mein nahi bhagwan ke haath mein hai and if you tu aur main khali unke haath mein khilone hai if you happen to laugh and tell uh, babu mushair then uh, he will think are what is this fellow instead of sympathizing me he is uh, fully laughing uh, so incongruous affect it is called and somebody says that uh, you got md seat and you started crying mujhe mil gaya kya mere jaise anpad gawar ko bhi mil gaya kya seat bol ke agar rona shuru kar diye to that is also sign of schizophrenia incongruous affect 50 year old businessman drinking heavily for at least 2 years then what is uh, true about anxiety subah subah uthte hi call gate paste yaad nahi aa rahe magar drink bottle yaad agar aa rahe to that is the day you are called addict right then you wake up from sleep and then straight go to davidson and open the table and check uh, whether uh, lithium toxic dose is uh, 1 or 2 or 3 if you are checking means that day you are addicted to preparation right so be sure are you into that sort of a maniac addiction then only you will get a good seat doctor what is this x-ray finding typically there is a lytic lesion with the overhanging edges in fact if you happen to see it on your mobile uh, smartphone console you can appreciate it better that is a typical feature of gout what is it called martel sign there is an erosion of the second uh, digit with overhanging edges the overhanging edges is called martel sign which is a typical feature which is seen in case of gout is what you need to remember a 22 year old with fever and gallium scan kung fu panda dikhai de rahe hai nahi de rahe so that is a classically called panda sign which is typically a feature of sarcoidosis this is how typically a panda like uh, uptake will be there salivary glands lacrimal glands sublingual glands 
all this will have an increased uptake which is called uh, the panda sign patient has asymmetric kidney hypertension and uh, he also has got a vascular disease of lower limb the same vascular pathology also involves renal artery and renal artery stenosis is the diagnosis now defective tubular function is a feature of fanconi proximal tubular dysfunction then barter syndrome gentleman syndrome not in case of polycystic kidney disease whenever 16 stones are there urine should be alkalinized to more than 7.5 myopathy is caused by statins glucocorticoids and penicillin penicillin now in diabetic neuropathy it is a vibration sense large fiber involvement in stock and glowing distribution is the classical description of diabetic neuropathy bilateral loss of ankle joint is a sign of lower motor neuron but extensor plantar is a sign of babinski is a sign of umn so combination of both loss of plantar response loss of uh, uh, ankle joint deep tendon reflex which is lmn along with upgoing plantar babinski's umn combination is a feature of frederick's ataxia subacute huh? this question is not there okay no problem is this there ye bhi nahi hai question numbers are different but question is there or not ha ah, iske pehla bhi question hai kya nahi hai to enjoy the answer of question we will randomly pick up around 100 questions to discuss teen sau discuss karna bole to too much ho jata hmm? 100 kam se kam discuss karke jayenge aur september october mein pura 300 ka 4-5 ghante baith ke discuss karenge but uh, the point is after going home you should check what are the see out of 300 maybe you will be doing about some 140 questions or 130 questions wrong जो करेक्ट किया आप कभी भी करेक्ट करते सिंपल रूल नो पॉइंट इन डिंग योर हेड ऑन दैट जो रॉन्ग किया वन थर्टी में एकदम नहीं पड़े हुए टॉपिक स्टडी फॉर्टी रहता दट यू हाउ टू क्विकली आइडेंटिफाई पिकअप रिवाइज दम स्लोली नंबर ऑफ टॉपिक्स दैट यू हैव नॉट रेड बोल के वाले टॉपिक्स कम होते जाना एज यू अप्रोच द एग्जाम बाई अक्टोबर नवंबर दट इज अ गोल ओके so what is the parietal lobe dysfunction lead to sensory extinction that is if you ask the person to close the eyes and then extend his palms if you are uh, simultaneously touching the two palms only one side he feels other side he doesn't that's called sensory inattention he will wear half his pant and shirt and uh, remaining half will be dangling and he will be coming out into the street so you should see some patients neurological dysfunction in real parietal lobe lesion patients then you will appreciate all these things neglect of opposite side idiomotor apraxia there are all the features central nystagmus is a feature of basilar migraine brain stem stroke multiple sclerosis in all this there is a central nystagmus large vessel vasculitis is takayasu digoxin is indicated uh, typically in atrial flutter fibrillation and psvt and uh, if there is a high output failure or thyrotoxicosis or anemia and that is leading to cardiac failure never give digoxin that the contra indications for digoxin is what you have to basically remember arsenic is used in the management of apml just like atra is also used all trans retinoic acid is used digital clubbing is a feature of endocarditis av fistula strikus pretrisia like cyanotic heart disease etc etc increased anion gap is a feature of all but not diarrhea renal tubular acidosis there are all the conditions where you have normal anion gap metabolic acidosis left ventricular hypertrophy how will you recognize the left side leads are v5 v6 right side are v1 v2 so the negative deflection in the v1 and positive deflection in the v6 left side lead together 
If you combine, it should not, it should be more than 35 mm. Right? So, uh, R wave in AVL, AVL is a left sided lead. R wave in AVL alone, more than 11 mm. Or R wave in lead 1, lead 1 is also a left pointing lead. It comes by connecting right arm with left arm. If it is more than 15 mm, there are all the indications. Whenever left ventricular hypertrophy is there, you get a LBBB, not a RBBB is what you need to appreciate. Calcium gluconate is given in any scenario like hypocalcemia, etc. But never, whenever there is any digitalis toxicity is what you need to appreciate. A 19 year old with HIV and cell count is less than 200 has got fever, dyspnea, non-productive cough. What is the cause? Classically, legionella or pneumophila, less than 200. Now, toxic nodular goiter. Goiter and hyperthyroidism do not occur simultaneously. First goiter appears for some time and then the hyperthyroidism develops. Patient has locally advanced anaplastic cancer of thyroid and tracheal obstruction. Then what is the best palliation that you can do? You do an isthmectomy is considered with the management in this infiltrative cancer. Medullary carcinoma of the thyroid, calcitonin is a very important marker. Riedel's thyroiditis, it has association with uh, retroperitoneal fibrosis, not hepatitis. Then uh, for the hyperparathyroidism, what do you want to give? You want to give anything but not thysite. Thysite retain calcium, which you don't want. Frusamide like drugs will lose calcium. Then primary hyperaldosteronism, con syndrome, what is except about it? So typically, most cases are because of adrenal adenoma, not hyperplasia. Hyperplasia constitutes one fifth of cases. Adrenal uh, zona glomerulosa hyperplasia. Dexamethasone, high dose dexamethasone suppression test if you do, then it can differentiate pituitary dependent ACDH versus ectopic ACDH to differentiate. High dose dexamethasone will help. A young woman, breast tenderness prior to period and there is a ill-defined lumpiness. When lumpiness is ill-defined, there is no role for FNAC. Fillot's tumor, though very big in size, gigantic, still it won't have a chest wall fixation. Then local radiotherapy after mastectomy has no use if already liver meds developed. It's mainly to avoid the local metastasis. Now regarding tamoxifen, what is the duration? 5 years is the duration. There is a light headedness and systolic murmur, tall R waves in lateral leads. LV hypertrophy is there. So classical of aortic stenosis where there is an ejection systolic murmur. Whenever subclavian artery stenosis is there, we do a percutaneous transluminal and balloon angioplasty is considered to be the management of choice. In AV fistula, the pulse pressure become widened, anemia, beriberi, pregnancy, AV fistula, they are all the conditions of wide pulse pressure. Thrombangitis obliterans, typically the, uh, it never occur in women and in non-smokers, that the two group where it doesn't, is not seen. Now varicose means in the legs, typically, um, are likely to develop in pregnant women, deep in thrombosis and uh, long standing like surgeons, barbers, etc. Ticket collectors in the bus. You should advise all those professions and in fact you should show, see as a doctor I am wearing the stockings and you should also wear is what you have to explain your um, a barber or uh, conductors, they are very common, they all come with varicose veins. There are some things that don't kill us, but don't let us to live. 
वन सच कंडीशन इज वेरिकोस बीन्स हेमरॉइड मरते नहीं मगर जीने की तमन्ना खो जाते राइट वैसे बीमारी होते हैं ये नाउ विच इज नॉट ए फीचर ऑफ फीस फेगस सो हाउ मच पार्ट इज इंट्रा एबडोमिनल ईस ऑफ एगस डॉक्टर टू सेंटीमीटर्स Boyer have is what it is a esophageal perforation after the vomiting. Now in achalasia, what is not a true statement? Is it the dilated esophagus or a narrow esophagus, which is ganglionic? A ganglionic is always the dilated part of the esophagus. Uh, about the narrowing, uh, does not have the ganglia. um very few ganglion cells in um echelasia now there is a marked weight loss diarrhea after meals history of vomiting and uh, he has recently undergone jejunostomy so what is the cause for his problem gastro jejuno colic fistula that's the reason barium will basically help now a patient with peptic ulcer has undergone vagotomy and anthrectomy what is what is he likely to develop he is likely to develop diarrhea gallstones gastric cancer but uh, b12 deficiency is a feature of total gastrectomy not partial gastrectomy perforated duodenal ulcer what is the least likely feature that you can basically expect uh least typical uh, feature perforation can be drug induced possible abdominal pain can be presenting feature and air in the diaphragm is very common and uh, whenever emergency is there only you will close the perforation at most using a peritoneum but um, you don't do definitive surgery like vagotomy pyloroplasty whenever patient presented with perforation already right then gastrinoma is associated with parathyroid adenoma as a part of the men type 1 syndrome now chains classification is banana bilirubin albumin ascites uh, neurological dysfunction due to encephalopathy etc etc typically there is an abdominal discomfort large intrahepatic unilocular cyst is being found then what is a best to treatment for this so obviously whenever there is a simple cyst of liver the cyst need to be deroofed typically using a laparoscopy so some of you are going to be laparoscopic nowadays more and more every surgeon is a laparoscopic surgeon today right a young lady undergoes laparoscopic cholecystectomy there is a recurrent biliary coli and uh, what is a true statement what do you want to do in this given case for gallstones mrcp is not a routine investigation whereas doing lft pt hemogram they are all part of the routine investigation and part of evaluation there is a difficult laparoscopic cholecystectomy and there is a drainage coming what is the best way to manage this scenario so uh, you need to give antibiotics and observe for 3 to 4 days because small bilious discharges are not uncommon to be found and they will subside on their own if they don't subside then it is an indication for doing an ercp and stunting after cholecystectomy patient has obstructive jaundice then uh, there is a stricture what do you want to do so typically it is the um, percutaneous translubinal cholangio um, gram ptc is a better option than ercp because ercp Uh, will not uh, show the upper end if the block is a complete one so biliary tree has got one end towards gut other is towards liver so whether to choose ptc or ercp depends upon location of stricture etc etc most carcinoma of the pancreas are ductal cell adenocarcinomas now there is a peritonitis due to perforation the management include everything but 
if there is a peritonitis, you can't sit and pray God giving antibiotics. So that is not uh, acceptable. Muscarinic receptor antagon is which is used in detrusor instability. Classically is fisoteronide. Pterodin. Fisoteronide is an anticholinergic for detrusor instability. Detrusor is supplied by what? Cholinergic receptors. Cholinergics will cause detrusor contraction. Anticholinergics relax the detrusor. So, whenever there is any excessive detrusor uh, contraction and that is leading to seepage of urine or if the sphincter is weak relatively compared to bladder, then you need to weaken the bladder by giving a anticholinergic. That is the whole idea. Cutaneous scarring is a feature of varicella associated teratogenic effect. Ventricular megaly is a feature of CMB infection basically. Now there is an inguinal lymphadenopathy which is painless in a 20 year old woman. Classical story of syphilis. So all the four uh, STDs, LGV, granuloma inguinal, then uh, um, syphilis, all these things you have to be 100% sure doctor. A 28 year old comes to endocrinologist and uh, uh, she is having uh, Increase in facial hair, then which drug used is a diuretic fundamentally and also used in hirsutism, spinalactone. Now, pyalpha reductase inhibitor would be a finasteride. Danazole is anti-gonadotropin, anti-progesterone and it can lead to osteoporosis. But danazole is typically a androgenic in action it lead to atrophy of endometrium it is used to treat menorrhagia it does not cause menorrhagia is what you have to basically understand now hormone replacement therapy is indicated in which scenario typically whenever there is a postmenopausal women severe vasomotor symptoms of menopause are really a botheration then one of the ways to manage is by giving HRT but while you are on giving HRT, you must be sure on the endometrial profiling, etc., etc., a family history of the patient, etc., etc. Now, lichen sclerosis typically is associated with type 1 diabetes, alopecia areata, primary biliary cirrhosis. So, these are all the associated uh, findings. Then, uh, Premature ovarian failure can lead to development of osteoporosis if sufficient estrogen is not there. Then which is an X-linked residue. Duquesne muscular dystrophy is X-linked residue. Please don't forget this list doctor. Every time they will ask this. Becker dystrophy. Androgen insensitivity. Duquesne muscular dystrophy. G6PD deficiency. Hemophilia you know. Color blindness you know. They are all X-linked. Then coming to hemophilia, chorionic villus sampling is one of the very early ways by which you can be able to make an antenatal diagnosis of the chromosomal problems is what you need to appreciate. Now, semen analysis, what is normal and abnormal semen according to World Health Organization International Standard Semen. Oligozoospermia for you to call what is the? Benchmark to qualify in PG entrance less than 20 million per ml, not less than 5 million per ml. That is too less, right? There. So, there is a reason 20 is the minimum. Then, typically, uh, ovulation, which test is used to know the um, ovulatory status. We use follicular tracking, mid luteal progesterone levels, basal body temperature, etc. etc. So, some of you after finishing MD gynops, infertility is a very, very, very challenging, creamy speciality. You are, if your uh, success rate is good, all depends on your stars, then patient will uh, build a temple for you. And unfortunately, if your success rate is not really good, 
बिकॉज ऑफ योर पुअर स्टार इसलिए पहले एस्ट्रोलॉजर के पास जाओ अच्छा मैं इनफर्टिलिटी हॉस्पिटल स्टार्ट कर रहा हूं मेरा कैसा है किस्मत जरा बोलो अगर मेरा नसीब अच्छा है तो मैं दूसरों का सुधार सकता हूं तो दैट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ अबाउट ट्विन प्रेगनेंसी सो द पेरिनेटल मोर्टैलिटी इज हायर वेन एवर दर्ज ए मोनोकोरियोनिक ट्विन कंपेयर टू दैट ऑफ द डाइकोरियोनिक ट्विन इज अ वेरी वेल नोन फैक्ट इन डाइकोरियोनिक ट्विन the dividing membrane will be more than 2 mm not less than 2 mm that's what you need to appreciate lambda sign you know lambda sign or twin peak sign what does it mean on ultrasound every time entrance they will ask this question so please uh, revise it huh? then contraception versus fertility lot of times pa patients ask you this question practically डॉक्टर आप ओसीपीस दे रहे हैं ओसीपीस देने के बाद बाद में अगर बच्चे होना है तो होते क्या क्यों नहीं होते डजन डजन होते दस वॉट यू कैन टेल दट देर विल बी ए टाइमली रिटर्न ऑफ नॉर्मल फर्टिलिटी आफ्टर स्टॉपिंग कंबाइंड ओरल कॉन्टेप्ट टू पिल्स इज वॉट यू नीड टू टेल द पेशेंट शिहान सिंड्रोम टिपिकली विल प्रेजेंट विद हाइपोपिटिटरिज्म नॉट हाइपर देन वेन एवर यू स्विच to continuous electronic fetal monitoring from intermittent auscultation in low risk women what is a false statement uh, i mean the indications for switching over what is the what is a not an indication typically the maternal pyrexia of 37.5 on two occasions two hours apart is considered to be an indication now coming to interventions that reduce the perineal trauma at the time of the child birth the episiotomy should be performed mainly to assist the in instrumental de deliveries that is a very well known fact straight fact okay and uh, uh, all the remaining are idiotic statements they are very easy to recognize that they are wrong max sulfate typically when will respiratory depression occur 2 to 4 is not a normal level so there is a reason it won't cause respiratory depression then mayer rokitansi kasna hosner is fundamentally a female phenotype mullerian agenesis they present with primary amenorrhea is considered to be the point then ashman is because of the additions of the endometrium leading to secondary amenorrhea already bleeding uh, started at the time of mean arc but uh, after that there are few endometrial procedures done and that led to additions and that is leading to secondary amenorrhea is what you need to appreciate preeclampsia incidence is typically increased by a longer birth interval rather than short birth interval so women with new partners twin pregnancies high ready form moles long birth interval family history of preeclampsia they are all predisposed whenever there is a hemolysis elevated liver enzymes low platelets hlp syndrome so what is a true statement about it if you look at the rate of recurrence of hlp in the future pregnancies 4% is a understatement 20 to 25% one fourth of pregnancies may repetition ho sakta so that's what you need to be very sure to counsel your patient whenever thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura is there what will it lead to it lead to cystocytes in the peripheral smear not thrombocytopenia i mean not pancytopenia it lead to cystocytes it lead to thrombocytopenia also right it lead to anemia also but not pancytopenia wbc won't get affected laparoscopic ovarian drilling of the polycystic ovarian disease you need to do whenever clomiphene resistance is there so it won't have a long lasting effect that is a disadvantage of it so what are the advantages and the disadvantages you should be sure now to reduce the menstrual blood loss in women who have got dub what will you basically use you will use prostaglandin synthetase inhibitor anti fibrinolytics and combined oral contraceptive pills and you will use levenor just till containing intrauterine contraceptive devices about hirsutism 
Androgen insensitivity may lack of hair is the problem, not excess hair. Axillary hair, pubic hair, nowhere hair, that is a situation of uh, androgen insensitivity syndrome. PCOD is associated with uh, a high estrogen levels which in fact will lead to endometrial hyperplasia. They are at risk of developing endometrial cancer. Those who have PCOD is what need to be remembered. So that is the story called this week Sunday test. Last 15 years we have no other job. So every Sunday to discuss and after going home having a nice lunch and sleeping is a part of the life. So but for you as students, as aspirants, you also go home, have a nice lunch, definitely. And Sham Char Baje Chai PK reading room jake kaha wrongs hua is test me. Take analyze karke kuch topics list leke tayar hoke. Next week come back with confidence and perform, perform, perform. Then only you will improve. Thank you, doctor.